I think he also, he told me he put a message out there on social media already that if for any reason we have technical issues or the power does go out or something like that, that he'll post the video um, on Tuesday. Okay. And I'm here, but I guess I'm going to hide my video because you don't really need me unless you need me. <laughs> okay. Right? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'll call you. See? Okay. Hello, Rupa. Hi. I was trying to see if I could get away with sweatpants. So I'm trying to. It's fine. I don't have my shoes on. It's fine. I'm on my socks. Oh, that doesn't look good. I'm going to put on the cardigan over it. <laughs> we have a house full of disappointed humans right now. So, yeah. Here we go. Business appropriate loungewear. <laughs> Mary, this is Dan Markham. Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. All right. Well, I don't see my video on here, but uh, at least I can hear you and you can hear me. Um, there should be a button at the bottom left hand um, corner that says uh, start video. Do you see it, sir? No, I don't. But normally this is done for me and I'm at home right now. But I'll I'll if I get on fine. If I'm not, you'll just hear me. Do you see the mute button to, on the far left hand toolbar at the bottom? No, but I, I'm I'm searching. Dan, are you on a computer, a laptop, or an iPad? What, what are you? I'm on my, I'm on my uh, computer at home. Do you have? Are you sure that you have a camera on that computer? Yes, yeah, the camera's on. Hmm. I just the only other thing I was thinking is if there's a settings or another option. I wonder if you haven't enabled the video option. I might not have, but again, uh, I'm, I'm still <laughs> investigating here. There you are. I have my video. Okay.
Hello. Hello, Winston. Hey, Dan. Staying warm today. Hey, Scott. Adam. Uh, it's Scott. My computer will switch over and say Scott in a minute instead of Adam. At least, it's, at least you're not a cat. <laughs> Have you seen that? That is so funny. <laughs> I am not a cat. Hi, Paul. Hi, Mary. How are you? Well, how are you? Oh, I'm doing all right. I'm looking at the tree limbs falling in my neighbor's yard at the moment, but yes, I'm doing all right. I'm staying at the Holiday Inn Express, so. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. We um, yes, we were supposed to stay at a Holiday Inn to, last night at Vanderbilt. We called up there and I was like, Hey, um, we're, you know, we're thinking about canceling our reservation. Is that okay? And they're like, oh yeah, everyone's crashing. You just need to not come. And I was like, yeah. Okay, cool. Are hey, you Paul, still where do you live? The, where, where do you live, Paul? The limbs aren't down in my neighborhood yet. Um, I am, I'm, I'm on Bel Air Drive. Um, but, uh, and I'm looking at the tree across the street. It's an older tree, but there's definitely like, there's limb, there, the limbs are sagging and there's definitely like limbs like they're smaller they're not huge or anything but they're, they're oh okay falling well, off into the into the and, and everything's covered in ice so it's kind of it's mm -hmm. getting there but. oh yeah there's ice everywhere well the and streets are still okay though i just went and got some groceries about an hour ago and it was the streets were just wet no not slick at all yeah i just got home from work and everything seemed to be okay too but <laughs> And Steve, further back in the neighborhood, we're losing some of our tree limbs are looking a little rough. <laughs> rough so are they? Oh well, yeah. I tell you, I I've gotten I've got a cooler out on the back porch opened up to cool it down to put food in. And yeah. I've got my gas logs going and my and my uh, uh sleeping bag out <laughs> and two coal oil lamps to light if I have to, so I'm ready. We have all of our um fireplaces on just in case too. So my uh, my mother-in-law and my niece are in town from Louisiana and we had because they were going to watch Jack while we were going to uh, or Avery while we were going to go up to Nashville last night and um, I think they're really disappointed because they don't get snow often down there and so I think we were all hoping for a good show for them instead of this nastiness so yeah well too bad they can they can go a little bit west of here and get plenty of snow I think if they're adventuresome <laughs> We'll be driving them through ice to get to the airport anyway. So. Oh boy, I think yeah. the roads will be awful tomorrow. I know. But they'll, they'll get the interstates pretty much cleared up. Your trouble will be getting out of our neighborhood. I know. <laughs> We've gotten excited. We bought a couple sleds. I think we jinxed it. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, maybe it won't be as bad as they say. Let's hope not. I know. Thank you, Mary. Yes, ma'am. Um, you might make me a co-host because I don't think I have all my normal controls right now to be able to help with the meeting. Done. Oh, thank you. I got it. Yep. I'm going to test light to his bandwidth too with the um my wife is on another video call at the moment <laughs> hey paul did you lose power earlier i did not okay. i lost power earlier so i'll go ahead and let y'all know then i think jesse said it flickered but but we didn't but but we do not we have not lost power but tua um, got out here great and got us taken care of very quickly good we are still waiting on Mr. Uh, Sandlin and Ms. Smith. 
that, that's that is a good question though if 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 one of us gets disconnected from power loss or something like that how does that handle with our bylaws and whatnot <laughs> i guess we can call in there'll be no video yes that's a good yeah, question yeah, good i thought phone. about that you can call in but if we lose it completely lose more than a quorum we'll have to postpone the meeting but we can we still have a quorum no, that won't happen. If, if enough people call in as long as you're you're either by a computer right. or phone you're you're in right yes sir I think so yeah so all they have to do phone. is just call in on their phone if they lose power don't jinx it please <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sandlin. Oh, Greg. Hi there. And Ms. Smith, bingo. Okay. I'm going to move um, a couple people into the waiting room that I know aren't going to be active participants. Shelly, can you hear us? Can, yes. Okay. Hi, how are y'all? Hi there, Shelly, how are you? Good. I'm doing well, thank you. Good, good. I'm back, my computer died, I had to relaunch. It's fine. Okay, um, Mr. Grimes, we, um, we have all members present and it is 4.32. All right. With that, I will say due to the COVID-19 emergency, the Planning Commission will be conducting its essential, essential business by electronic means rather than being required to gather a quorum of its members physically present in the same location because it is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans. This meeting is in compliance of the Governor's Executive Order Number 71, which remains into effect till 11.59 p.m. February 27th to um, 2021. With that, I uh, will call to order and as it has been determined that we will meet electronically, this is necessary to protect the public health and safety and welfare in the light of the coronavirus. The recording of this meeting <coughs> is available to the public online. I am going to determine a quorum. Um, when I say your name, let me know that you're here. Mayor Noes? Here. Kelly Smith? Here. Rupa Blackwell? Here. Paul Schwer? Here. Bill Comer? Here. And Greg Sandlin? Here. All right. I'm present as well. All seven is here and we have a quorum. All right. Um, let's see here. Mr. Sandlin, did you lead us last time in the Pledge of Allegiance? Uh, I don't think I did, but I'd be happy to do it this time. Will you do that for us? Thank you. All right. You stand. I pledge allegiance Jesus. to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America to the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, one nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice for all. For all. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, first bit of business here is uh, if we will read and approve the minutes. So once you have read the minutes and y'all are comfortable, I will entertain a motion. Move to approve. I have a motion from Alderman Blackwell. Second. And a second from Miss Smith. All right. We get to do the roll call thing, guys. 
So I will start as I see you on my Zoom feed. Um, Ms. Blackwell. Yes. Mr. Sandlin. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Mayor Lewis. Yes. Mr. Comer. Yes. Where? Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. I am yes as well, so that will be unanimous. All right. Uh, next on the any reports from staff or officers? No, sir. All right. Our first on our agenda is old business, but I think we have had. Um, and we'll just talk through this real quick. Um, Mr. Howard has asked that uh, we hold this off to our next meeting, but I know we need to recognize that we're within 60 days. Um, the Senate, Mary, sorry, that tongue tied. So what, do we still need to discuss? I know we had a lot of questions on this. Um, would that be the time for open discussion or do we need, since he asked for 30 days, how would you direct that we should go? Um, the applicant rest requested a continuance for 30 days. Your next meeting is March 15th, so you could make a motion to that effect. Also, um, we do have the city engineer present. If you still want to hear the presentation for the information that you have requested, um, I believe that would be appropriate unless the city attorney thinks otherwise. I, I don't think there's any objection to hearing his report if he wishes to make it. Although, if we postpone the entire thing, that also would be appropriate. But whichever the commission wishes to do is appropriate. Um, I guess my question is, if we can still hear the presentation, but still elect to postpone for 30 days, would that be okay, Mr. Washington? Yes, that would be all right. Just to kind of get a quick from our commission, would y'all, do you want to postpone completely for 30 days or would you like to hear the presentation knowing that we are going to postpone it? I will just ask them, um, y'all individually, just real quick. Uh, Ms. Smith? Uh, you would call me first. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, pardon, I'm, me, par, par, yeah. pardon me, just a minute if I might interrupt. Uh, yes, sir. Is Mr. Howard with us tonight? No, sir. And I think we ought to postpone the discussion in the report as well. Because okay. we ought to be able to hear that too. Okay, then that's what we will do. If I will entertain a motion for us to postpone, and that will still fall within our 60 days, correct, Ms. San Diego? Yes, sir. I need you to call, post you called on me um, first, so I'll, I'll, I'll move to postpone. <laughs> okay, move to postpone. Do I have a second? Second. Right, we have the motion made for Ms. Smith and a second from Alderman Blackwell. All right, I will do the roll call vote. You're up on my screen. Order. Yes. Sorry, point of order. Um, so you're voting to continue the public hearing to the March 15, 2021 Planning Commission meeting at 4.30 p.m. Is that, that's not necessarily a public hearing. Would it be just going to be considered the old business? We've already went through the public hearing section of it, correct? Right, but if you're continuing a hearing, you have to state for the record exactly what date and time you're continuing it to so we don't have to re-advertise it. Okay, sorry about that. It's okay. All right, so did everybody get that? We are moving to continue to our next meeting, which is March 15th. All right, and Ms. Smith. Yes. Alderman Blackwell. Yes. Mr. Square. Yes. Mr. Sandlin. Yes. Mayor Noes. Yes. Is Mr. Comer still with us? Yes. Oh, there you are. You're hiding in there. <laughs> All right. And I will be yes. That'll be seven. Oh, we will postpone till March 15th. All right. All right, so that was all the old business. Now we are in new business. And our first new business is a zoning map amendment public hearing. This will be the zoning, the zoning map amendment for 244 requests. This is a request to rezone a parcel on 300 South Atlantic Street from commercial district C1 
neighborhood commercial to C3, which is neighborhood commercial district. Our, um, Mr. Reyes is our applicant. Um, just as a point of order, we, um, within our bylaws, we have a certain way that we are gonna go through these. Uh, I think everybody might've got a copy of those, I'm not sure. So in a public hearing, you know, the first applicant, uh, we hear from the applicant or the, is that right, Ms. Uh, San Mango? San Diego, yes. The, yeah, I'm um, sorry. We hear from the applicant, then the commission can present questions or concerns to the applicant. Then the general public can do public comments. Then the um, applicant and commission can respond um, to the public comments. Staff does their presentation, and then there's discussion among the uh, commission, and you close the hearing. All right. Thank you, Mary. Um, so the, I guess now I will ask, is the applicant available to speak for the uh, zoning map amendment 244? Uh, yes, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, yes, I'm sorry. I, I I couldn't get on Zoom, but I am uh, I'm over the phone. All right. Can you just uh, tell us a little bit about what you're planning, what you're doing? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what I have is uh, it's an older property that uh, has been there. It's it's been a house for uh, it's just been a house that people have been living in for as long as it's been around. Uh, unfortunately, the, the person that I purchased it from left it uh, empty for over a year, so it went back to commercial, but it's, um, it's a property that would be very difficult to, to rent to uh, uh, as a commercial property because it's not really sitting out in the road. It's kind of sitting towards the back uh, around some other um, residential uh, um, properties. So it, it's an it basically boils down to it's an old house. So it, it, we're trying to just you know fix it up and use it as a rental house, as opposed to fixing it up and trying to put a business in it. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, so now I guess do we have any questions right now from the commission? All right, no questions from us. Then I will open the public hearing. With the public hearing, um, everybody's designated two minutes. Um, please state your name and your address. If you are planning to donate your time, please uh, state it in the beginning so we can tally those up so we don't have some doing computer wise, we don't have a lot of interruption there. Um, with that, I open the public hearing. Is there anybody that would like to speak? All right, with that, I will close the public hearing. Nobody spoke, so we won't respond. So now we will listen. Um, Mary, could you uh, give us a staff report? Yes, thank you, sir. Um, this application is zoning map amendment number 244. It's for the property located at 300 South Atlantic Street. The applicant is requesting to rezone the property from Central Commercial District C1 to Neighborhood Commercial District C3. Um, the area to be rezoned is approximately 0 0.28 acres. As the applicant stated, it's an existing single family dwelling that was constructed in 1905 and it's approximately 1,775 square feet. Um, the a single family residence is considered a non-conforming use in the C1 zoning district because C1 does not allow single family houses as a permitted use. Um, Per section 802F1, if a house or non if a non-conforming dwelling unit sits vacant for more than a year, it loses its non-conforming status, which means that it cannot be remodeled and reoccupied as a house. The applicant purchased the property with that intent. However, he was unaware that that one year time period had lapsed. Um, saying that in a uh, effort to allow the new property owner to um, fulfill his desire to remodel the house and have it occupied as a single family house. Um, while at the same time, because this is in a commercial um, land use category, as well as in relative close proximity to the downtown, 
uh, staff is recommending to go to the C3 zoning district, which is that neighborhood commercial district, which allows for a myriad of commercial uses, but also allows for single family residential dwellings. So in the short term, the applicant can um, exercise their property rights to develop at a single family house, but in the long term, the city and the applicant and a potential future developer could still um, occupy the existing dwelling or redevelop the site for commercial uses so we don't miss out on that future opportunity. Um, it meets all of the minimum lot size and dimensions of the C3 zoning district. And um, there were no concerns from staff. So staff's recommendation is to make a motion for a favorable recommendation to the board of mayor and alderman. I'm available for questions. Questions for Mary. All right, with that, I will entertain a motion to open discussion. Move to approve. Second. All right, that was um, Mayor Nois and Alderman Blackwell with the second. All right, any discussion within the commission? All right, with that, I will call the question and um, I will move forward. We, this is for a favorable approval to be sent to the Board of Mayor Alderman for the rezoning map amendment 244. So um, as, you, as I see you on the screen, um, Alderman Blackwell? Yes. Comer? Yes. Mr. Squared? Yes. Sandlin? Yes. Mayor Nois? Yes. Comer? Mr. Comer? I think I see Mr. Comer. Uh, there, we go. there you go. I, I was trying to unmute. It wasn't clicking for some reason. I thought I voted before. I must have voted for somebody else, but I thought you called my name and I said yes. That's all right. That's all right. Ms. Smith? Yes. All right. And I am a yes. That will be a unanimous decision, favorable decision to move towards the uh, zoning change. All right. Now we're to number two. Zoning map amendment 240. Five. This is a request to rezone the parcel of block 200 on Flower Town Road from low dis density residential um, R1 to low dis density residential district RS1, which is in the UGB, excuse me, that's okay, low density, which is UGB, to general um, district, which is C2. Um, and our applicant is uh, Mr. Michael Sadler. Mr. Sadler, are you available? All right. Mary, did we know if Mr. Sadler was gonna be on? I have not received a confirmation from him. I can certainly, um, I will call him. Okay. With that, I will move, since he is not here, we can't respond, ask questions. I will open this to a public hearing. Once again, we are open to public hearing. You um, get two minutes, state your name and address. And if you're donating your time, please um, let us know in the beginning. With that, um, I will open the public hearing. All right. So nobody in the public hearing, I will close it. Um, Mary, would you like to let us know what's going on? I think she's calling him right now. No, I, I can do my Sorry. report now. Um, this is zoning map amendment case number 245. Um, it's for Mr. Sadler. He is requesting to rezone um, his property from uh, current zoning R1 within the city of Tullahoma and RS1, which is in the urban growth boundary of Coffee County. 
um, he's requesting to rezone the, it's a split zoning lot. So part of the lot is in Tullahoma, the rest is in the urban growth boundary. So he's requesting to rezone the entire property um, to the CT zoning district um, within Tullahoma. Um, as I stated, he has split zoning, the entire property, well, he's in split jurisdiction. The entire property is 5.39 acres. It is currently vacant, but there's a cleared building envelope towards the southeastern portion of the lot and the remaining portion of the lot is wooded with steep topography. Um, the subject property is in the northwest corner of the city and has frontage on Flower Town Road, which is a local road. Um, the immediate area on Flower Town Road, as well as backing up onto North Jackson Street um, is commercially zoned. Um, for the comprehensive plan, um, this area within the city of Tullahoma is in a commercial land use category, so it's appropriate to rezone the property to C2. And um, again, the part of the property that's in the urban growth boundary directly is adjacent to the commercial zoning district. So the rezoning to the entire property to the city C2, as well as the Coffee County C2, um, seems appropriate. It meets all the minimum lot size of standards of the C2 zoning district for both jurisdictions and staff um, is uh, recommending making a favorable, favorable recommendation to both the board of mayor and aldermen and the Coffee County Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Ms. Samaniego. All right. Um, with that, I will entertain a mo Any questions? All right, with that, I'll- Any questions, sir? Yes, ma'am. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Mr. Warsham, can you speak to the fact, can we proceed without the applicant being present? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you very much. All right, I would entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Mayor Nois and Alderman Blackwell. All right, we have a motion for a favorable approval to the Board of Mayor Alderman and the County Commission. All right, any questions? Any anything with the Commission? All right, we are a quiet bunch today, so I will <laughs> call the question, um, Miss Blackwell. Yes. Mr. Square? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. All right. Uh, Mayor Nois? Yes. Mr. Sandlin? Yes. All right. Mr. Comer? Yes. I'm a yes as well. So that is a favorable from our Planning Commission to all. All right, let's move to the next one. This will be Zoning Map Amendment 241 request. This is the rezone, this is to request the rezone of a parcel at 200 Flower Town Road in high, from high density residential slash mobile home park R4 to general district C2. Our applicant is Mr. Nathan Hill. So Mr. Hill, are you available? Did Mr. Hill know, Mary? Uh, you sent the information. Mm -hmm. all right. <laughs> we don't know. There could be power issues and everything else. So. Correct. Um, all right, then I will open this to a public hearing. Please uh, state your name. Two minutes. If you are donating your time, please let me know at the beginning. All right. All right, I will close the public hearing. <laughs> all right. Mary, can you give a staff report, please? Yes, sir. Uh, Mary Samaniego, for the record, this is zoning map amendment number 241 for Nathan and Linda Hill. It's at the 200, um, it's at 200 Flower Town Road. It's actually right next door to the rezoning that we just heard. Um, this, I think you saw this case or this site uh, over a year ago for possible expansion 
of his um, lawn mowing sales business on Flower Town Road. Um, he is requesting to rezone the property from R4 for which his current business is a non-conforming use into the CTC2 zoning district, which would make his um, commercial retail sales and service use a permitted by right use. Um, the property is 1.58 acres. Again, it's on uh, 200 Flower Town Road. The existing commercial um, building is 6,500 square feet with a building and a parking area. Mm -hmm. The building was constructed in 2006. Um, it meets all the dimensional and uh, standards, minimum lot width and size for the CT zoning district. Um, again, for comprehensive plan considerations, it is in a development corridor as well as the general commercial zone, uh, land use category, which encourages rezonings in the zoning district being C2. Um, I've provided a list of all possible uses in your staff report for your consideration. It meets several of your economic development goals and land use objectives. Saying that, I uh, recommend a vote to send a favorable recommendation to the Board of Mayor and Alderman. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any questions? All right, with that, I will entertain a motion. A move to approve. Second. All right, we've got a roll going here. That was um, Mayor Noes and seconded by uh, Alderman Blackwell. All right, now that it is open, do we have any discussion? Uh, do y'all remember when we talked about this about a year ago? I, well, and I'm trying to remember. I thought we did rezone it. We we agreed for him to be able to do his site plan upon right. him upon him doing this, but we didn't stop him from going ahead and getting his concrete poured so right. he could cover his <clears throat> tractor. So that was part right. of it. If people do, isn't that how you remember it, Jennifer? Hi, that's correct. We had a site plan. And in the development uh, committee in reviewing that site plan is when Mr. Hill discovered the zoning conflict. Um, and so he had a need to uh, get his current inventory, I believe, purchased by the end of the year. And because of that urgency, we said we would go ahead and consider the site plan as long as he took the necessary steps to to request the correct zoning. Other discussion? If that, I will call the question. All right. Um, Alderman Blackwell. Yes. Mayor Nellis. Yes. Uh, Mr. Comer. Yes. Mr. Square. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Family. Yes. That has us all. I'm a yes as well. So that is a unanimous favorable to the Board of Mayor Alderman. All right. Now on to annexation. All right. Um, I think this is my first annexation. So we will go forward with that. All right, uh, Mr. Markham, would you like to speak on um, your application? Uh, certainly. First, I'd like to, to thank the, the board for inviting me to attend this. Uh, we plan to uh, enhance uh, the property along Avoca Lake Road and develop uh, about 30 lots that will uh, front on pri new private roads, that will new public roads that will be developed on private land and then made public to the to the landowners for new homes. I'm glad to answer any questions anybody might have. Would anybody from um, the Planning Commission have a question for Mr. Markham at this time? All right. With that, now I'm going to open up to a public hearing. If uh, you would like to address, please state your name and address. You get two minutes. And if you're donating your time, please let us know at the beginning. All right, I'm opening the public hearing. All right, 
with that, I will close the public hearing. All right, we will go. Um, Mary, would you like to uh, give a staff report? Yes, sir, thank you. Um, again, as you stated, this is a mark of annexation and this you're making a recommendation to the Board of Mayor and Alleman um, on the annexation as well as the plan of service. Um, th there's kind of two steps in this process. One is to annex the property and then you also have a plan of service that states how um, city services will be delivered um, to the property once it is annexed. Um, the property is non-contiguous, but per Tennessee uh, annexation law 651-104-D, you're allowed to um, annex non-contiguous properties uh, as long as they're within the urban growth boundary and they will be meeting either a future industrial, commercial, or residential development. The applicant has applied, as he stated, for a 30 lot residential subdivision which is on the tentative agenda for your March 15th meeting next week, month. Um, the plan of service is in your packet. It has been reviewed uh, through Ms. Moody's office for um, staff um, service providers being Public Works, Parks and Rec, the Fire Department, Police Department, Planning and Codes, the school system, ERPUD, uh, and uh, TUA Water Sioux and Electric. They have all recommended approval. Um, surrounding properties are all zoned RS1. Um, it's anticipated when and if this property is annexed and the plan of service is adopted, we will also be considering a rezoning to rezone the property from the RS1, which is a county zoning district in the urban growth boundary to R1, which is the city's equivalent zoning district. Similarly, we'll also be doing a land use amendment to put this property within a city of Tullahoma land use category, also anticipated at that March 15th meeting. Um, the planning consideration, again, the property is 15.35 acres. It's approximately one parcel away to the east from the existing city of Tullahoma corporate boundaries. Um, Per Tennessee statutes, advertisements of this meeting have been completed. Um, the Planning Commission, again, states, makes a recommendation via resolution. I've included the Planning Commission resolution in your packet through a Planning Commission resolution to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen for recommendation of approval of the plan of service and the annexation as well. That concludes our presentation. Thank you, Mary. Does anybody have a question? So Mary, does that mean that when we make a motion, we make the motion for a, to approve the resolution or do we make a motion for two separate things for the annexation and for the plan of services? One moment. I believe I put it in your report. Yes, you'll make a, a favorable recommendation for the planning commission resolution to the board of mayor and aldermen. The resolution speaks to the plan of service and the annexation. So one motion. Okay. Um, I, I have a quick question. Um, at the the, um, the meeting where we, uh, this came before this commission in regards to uh, approving this um, first phase, um, I believe Jennifer and, and um, I had a question about whether it should be a minor or a major subdivision. So I guess I just, um, Steve, if you're on the line, is Steve with us still? Yes, ma'am. Um, Worsham? He's, he's on the line, ma'am. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the annexation, are we, discuss, are we just considering the, these lots right now or are we considering the, the rest of the, I just want to make sure that it, I have it. Yeah, you're, you're um, approving the annexation of the 15.35 acres. This does not have any um, approval attached to any subdivision. Okay, got it. This, okay. this is the 
is this the time to to is this discussion time or is this just questions about what we're what we're what we're about to approve? This is questions for um, Mary. Um, I have a couple of discussion points. I don't know if it's appropriate here or after we make a motion. We can make a motion and so we can go ahead and get into that if nobody has any direct mm -hmm. questions for Mary right now. Uh, Chad, have you closed the public hearing? Oh, yes, sir. Okay, good. All right. Yes, sir. Um, so if I entertain a motion. Right, yep. I would entertain a motion so we can begin discussion amongst the commissioners. I'll, I'll move it. to approve. Now second. Okay. I've got um, Mayor Nois and I think I heard Ms. Blackwell. All right, we have it open. Um, Discussion from the commissioners. All right, I got I got two points. Um, first point is, is has there been and this is this may be more of a point for the mayor of the 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 board of mayor and aldermen to discuss, but um, there is significant um, investment from the city for infrastructure um, for this utilities, school stuff like that. Um, is there an analysis on the on the tax revenue brought in on this uh, an, annexation uh, from um, what we're giving the property owner to what we're receiving as from the as a city? Yes, no. Board of Mayor and Alderman question. Well, I, I'll, I'll comment on that. It's any time that there's a, a, a housing development, certainly the city, the utilities are making an investment. But there's that you're you're also getting a lot of new homes, you're getting new taxpayers, you know you're um, you might not it might not pay off in the first year or two or three years, but it's a long term significant right. payoff for the community, right? I mean, that, I, I mean that's my question. I mean, how many years? Um, and and there's a maintenance there's a maintenance tag with that too. So I mean, it may never it may never um, um, come to fruition, especially with road maintenance and stuff like that. Well, but I think you could devil's advocate you could probably say that with anything right i think that you know you, you invest in it i mean if there is i think that what we've seen in the past few months is that there's a need for um more more housing in the area if you're looking at what housing is going for right now um and i think that you know I, from my standpoint on the city board um i think it's a worthwhile investment okay i mean and is this is, I mean, there's a lot of other land back there too. Um, it's going to have a significant impact on the Avoca Riley Creek intersection, um, things like that. I, I personally would like to talk about at some point when, when we go for the Avoca Riley Creek intersection, because I know when we looked at um, in the, the one that we're, we're postponing, I think we can postpone that to that conversation too, because it does surround that it, it, when you read through the report from Gresham Smith. Um, I think that, you know, I don't know if this was taken into account, this the, the development out there into that based on the email. I can speak to that point. Um, as far as the traffic study that was conducted at the Y intersection, uh, Gresham Smith did not consider areas outside of our city limits. Uh, this area is in our urban growth boundary. And I did talk with John Story about that. And his recommendation was to consider uh, traffic impact studies if we begin and to see enough development that we think it could change the signal warrant analysis that was done, uh, then we would put that cost on future developers and ask for them to pay for traffic impact studies. And there are there are a range of traffic impact studies and analysis that could be done, but it would take. Uh, my understanding from John's story is it would take a very, pretty significant amount of growth to um, change his recommendation or to see those that intersection meet the warrants for a signal. Okay, um, I. I just know, I mean, one, one point of maintenance from the county is that that's like, that's one of the worst roads in the county. Um, I would imagine that the city would be cleaning that up if that was, if it was annexed. So that's a, that's a plus. Um, if I may speak to well, that, this is Steve Worsham. 
we will be entering into an agreement with the county relative to matters such as road maintenance. So that'll be something that the Board of Mayor Nolan will consider later relative to this same issue. Okay. Thank you, Steve. All right. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just kind of uh, just thoughts. I mean, I'm not so sure that, that, um, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. Um, I'm kind of uh, against um, extending the city boundaries when there's, when there's, when there's other, you know, we need to be focused on the core of it, but that's, that's just me. Any other discussion? Uh, so, so if we, if we provide a favorable recommendation for this, then are we then providing a favorable recommendation for the rest of the property too? That, are we looking at the big picture? That's the one part. I'm just, want to make sure that I know I'm voting for just these this these 15 acres and um, or whether I'm putting in a favorable recommendation for the lot of it so that I can uh, this, no ma'am it's only this, the 15 acres there's a legal description for the 15.35 acres that will be attached to the resolution so to be clear exactly what portion of the entire Markham um, property holdings is being annexed. So this is only the um, properties that are in the Northwest corner of Boca Lake and uh, Corpus Creek. Okay. Right, that's correct. But because it's, we're leapfrogging here. So by doing this, then it would be a given that anything in between would then, by casting our vote for that would be, we'd be casting a favorable vote for the land in between to be annexed at a later date. That's why I just wanna make sure that, you know, we're clear on that part. Right, um, the land in between is not owned by the Markhams as of this date. It's owned by an, an outside party. Ocean is that we, it's only 15 acres that is currently by, owned by the Markhams. And as I mean, let me understand, Shelly, you're just asking by us saying yes, does that mean you feel like we have yeah, to say I just, yes? Yeah, I just thought I remember Jennifer at the last meeting when this came before that, you know, that was, they were developing, there was just some parcels and it was part of a, a bigger plan that, or intent, the intention was to develop more. <clears throat> and I just wanted to make sure that we were all, you know, that by voting now, we were clear that we're voting, we're, sort, we're starting to, you know, we're setting the path or setting the uh, kind of setting it up so that, that we can then later we can approve the rest of it, I guess. That makes sense. So, so Shelly, the, I think the, what you're referring to is the, the four lots on Copperus Creek Road there that um, above to the north of the subjected property um, okay. on the map. We, we voted to subdivide those maybe three, four months ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe December or so, I think. Was it December or November? It was last year. One of, one I'm of those. Sorry, I'm, I'm probably, uh, excuse me if I'm confused, but. <laughs> but, but oh. yeah, I mean, you, 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 you had the point there um, that, that those were more than double the minimum size um, and kind of uh, looking at possibly, um, you know, being subdivided again. Um, I mean, this, the whole area out there. I mean, I, I know you're familiar with it, but I mean, it's just nothing but but open pasture, um, and uh, and there can be a lot of houses put in there and and put well, in heaven. Yep, yeah, I'm mind. not making an opinion. Yeah, on whether I, I think it's a good idea or bad. I just want to make sure that I have it um, that I'm clear on what exactly we're um, setting the stage for, and just want to make sure not you know. It's beautiful, and I would be happy to see a, a development. And I know um, that's it's ripe for that would be an asset to our community. I just want to make sure that I um, that ever uh, that I understand that you know. <laughs> I don't know how to put this. So <clears throat> I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm I know that am I voting on just a, a, a phase or you know just. A, Okay, I'm, Ms. Smith, are you, asking, are you asking if this motion that you're making tonight will establish a precedent for future yes. applications of Thank you. property? Correct. Thank you.
Um, I don't believe so. I think that each one has to be reviewed on their own merits. Um, they must meet statute as well as have a plan of service. Mm -hmm. um, but Mr. Warsham can certainly uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you, Mary. Sorry, you know, this is um, my first annexation as well. So I'm just trying <clears throat> to make sure that I, I go by the book and, and learn as, no. as well. Yeah, you need to understand what, what you're voting on. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the, the map, you know, when I guess the Hunter's Ridge community was put in in the 90s and we really reached out uh, into the urban growth boundary to annex Hunter's Ridge. And that's been a wonderful source, a wonderful community, nice homes, great uh, property tax re uh, revenue. So I, I, this seems to be something similar to that on a smaller scale, 15 acres, nice homes, uh, we need home, we need homes in this community. I mean, it's really tight, and this right. looks like a really good investment that would you know just this is how the city wants to grow, right? We want to put nice homes in these areas of of our of our county. Thank you. I, I'm sorry for putting you guys through that, and I didn't word my questions well, but I just um I really want to get a um a really good understanding on the whole process. So, this is my first time on this side. Of well, the annexation I'm, process. I've, I've been on the other on the developer side before. <laughs> so, I, I feel like on snow days, words are hard for all of us. So. Thank you. I don't know why we have these meetings on Mondays. Why? Why Monday evenings? Maybe Tuesday right. morning or something. I'm... It's all right. And I kind of went in and out. So, I'm. Just, anybody else need to speak no, on this? It, just Greg to clarify my concern earlier is like. I'm definitely of the opinion that if there's going to be development out here, that it should be annexed. Um, but I, I just don't know if this is the right place to develop more for the city. Um, anyway, I'm done. I thought I would just yes. add a couple of points if I could. One is you mentioned the four lots that were previously, I think, presented to you as a minor subdivision plat. And those properties are included in this annexation request. So his plans to keep those, uh, that prior plat and keep those four lots out in the county, uh, he has changed his mind and included those lots in this request. So they will be part of one future development. And I think one of the benefits that we looked at, obviously for, it's a mutual benefit for the city and for the developer, is that these homes will be developed on city or public sewer. Right, but again, and I'm so sorry guys, but just my, just for clarification. So, but we considered those as a minor subdivision, but it's no, it's so, even though Mary's saying this is separate from any subdivision applica application, but they will be included in a bigger subdivision so they, it's no longer minor at this point, it's gonna be. No, so what you approved before, he presented a plat. So mm -hmm. it was a plat for a four lot subdivision, all of the lots fronting Coppers Creek Road, and there was no annexation request. Today, you're considering annexation of the 15 acres, and in the future, he will submit a preliminary plat for what development of those 15 acres looks like. But tonight, you're not considering uh, development plat. But doesn't the regulations, don't they say that if you know that there's going to be more development, you have to consider it as a major subdivision? When, when he brings that plat, it will be a major subdivision, okay. but our definition, and I should let Mary speak, so I'm sorry. Um, our definition is more about the number of lots and the infrastructure that's developed. That's how we define minor and major. Right. But at the time we knew there was going to be more. So that's where I got kind of like thrown off. Correct. Yeah, he received approval of the minor subdivision. Um, that was before my time with the city of Tullahoma. I'm not aware if he actually recorded that plat. I, I'm under the suspicion that it was not recorded. But regardless, in either scenario, that plat will become null and void and that area that the four lots were going to be created in will be encompassed within the 30 lot preliminary plat um, that he's already submitted. Excellent. So really Thank you. That's what I was looking for. I got, goes away. Thank you. Yeah. That's what I was looking for. I just, I got hung up on this. <laughs> yeah. And per your code, anytime you subdivide more than four lots and or have public improvement, it's required to be a major subdivision. 
So you'll see it um, with a preliminary plat, uh, the planning commission will approve, staff will approve the construction plans, and then the final plat will come back to the planning commission for final approval. Perfect, thank you so much. You're welcome. S sorry guys, sorry to, to delay with a little lesson for me. <laughs> problem, not a problem. Any other discussion? If not, I will call the question and I will go across as I see you on the computer. Um, Mr. Schwer. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Alderman Blackwell. Yes. Comer. Yes. Mr. Sandlin. Yes. Mayor Nellis. Yes. And I will be a yes. That will be a unanimous decision. And that is for the annexation favorable to the Board of Mayor. All right. Next, uh, we had one that was going to continue. So we will be at uh, Redbird Minor Subdivision Plat. This is to create four residential lots and existing 3.9 acres on 900 block of Duck Blanton Road. Our applicant is Mr. Jeff Dean. Mr. Dean, are you available? Hold on, sir. I'm Mr. Grimes, I'm sorry, point of order. We need All to right. state on the record um, the continuance request for the oh. Christian Life uh, Church Strides. So you just state that the applicant, um, that staff okay. is continuing the case and state that it's going to the March 15th, 2021, 4.30 p.m. Planning Commission meeting. Okay, I will do that. The stating, stating that during the public hearing is itself notice, so we don't have to pay to re-advertise it. We'll open this up to the public hearing to say the Christian Life Church Strides Minor Subdivision Plat has been the staff will continue to March 15th, 2020 Planning Commission hearing. All right. Does that work? Yes, sir. All right. I'll close the public hearing on the Christian Life Church Strides and then op open up back up to the Redbird. I apologize for that. It's okay. Uh, so Redbird, Mr. Dean, are you available? Mr. Dean is not. This is Jared Sides. I work for Johnson and Associates Land Survey, and I'll be representing him. All right. So just if you explain the project, and then we'll go from there. Yes, sir. This is a 3.93 uh, acre track. We're looking to split it into four single family dwellings. And <clears throat> it's located on Dunk Blanton Road, zoned RS1. Uh, our smallest lot is nine tenths of an acre and uh, we have water. It'll be on septic and the soils evaluation has been done and we've submitted those plats. All right. Does the, does the commission have any questions? All right, with that, thank you. I will gonna open this up for a public hearing. Please state your name. You have two minutes in your address. And if you're donating your time, please uh, let me know at the beginning. The public hearing is now open. All right, I will close the public hearing. All right. Um, Mary, would you please give the staff report? Uh, thank you, sir. Again, Mary Samaniego for the record. This is the Redbird Minor Subdivision. Um, the applicant is Jeff Dean. The current zoning is RS1 in the urban growth boundary of Coffee County. The existing lot is 3.93 acres, which is currently vacant. Um, the applicant is proposing a four lot subdivision under the current RS1 zoning standards. They, the proposed lots meet all of the dimensional um, standards of the existing zoning district. Um, they are proposing development on septic. The septic site uh, have been preliminary approved through TDEC and I have copies of that approval for each of the lots. Um, there were no comments from any of the development advisory committee except for uh, myself. I'm asking that uh, prior to final signatures of the plat that the individual septic uh, systems information be added to the plat and show the road classifications for um, both <clears throat> roads at this property fronts, which are Dunk Blanton Road and Anthony Mills Road. 
saying that um, staff's recommendation is to approve the final plan subject to staff conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Any questions? With that, I will entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. second. All right, that was uh, Alderman Blackwell, and I think Mr. Comer in there with the second. All right, any discussions about this? All right, with that, I will call the question. And this is for the approval of the minor subdivision plat with staff's uh, recommendations. I guess, is that how you would say it, Mary? No, it would be uh, approval of the minor subdivision final plat with staff's conditions of approval. Staff's conditions of approval. Thank All you. right. Yes, ma'am. So I'll go up here. Uh, Alderman Blackwell. Yes. Mayor Nose. Yes. Comer. Yes. Square? Yes. Sorry. Mr. Sandlin. Yes. Smith? Yes. And yes for me. That was a unanimous decision. All right. I'm going to open up the public hearing for the Copperas Ridge major, major subdivision plenary plat. This will need to be staffed to be the staff has to be continued to March 15th, 2021 at our planning commission hearing. So with that, I will close the public hearing there on Copper's Ridge. Excellent. And now we will do other business. We have um, a zoning text amendment 226 and that's on section 804 nonconforming lots of records. If you would take that over Mary. Uh, thank you, sir. Mary Samaniego for the record. Um, this is a text amendment that I um, discussed with the planning commission last month. Um, again, this was a section of the code. When I um, began my job the first week, I read the entire zoning code as well as the subdivision code. And this was the one section that caused me concern. Um, as background in 2018, the text amendment was approved to the planning commission and the board of mayor and all of Alderman severely limiting the use of non-conforming lots of record. The newly adopted language in effect made residential properties unbuildable that were either less than 6,000 square feet in total area, had less than 30 feet in width at its nearest point or had a front setback of uh, 15 feet or less or five feet side or less. Um, in United States constitutional zoning law, a regulatory takings occurs when a government regulation limits the use of private property to such a degree that the regulation effectively deprives the property owners of economic reasonable use or value of their property. Um, in general zoning terms, the intent of the non-conforming lot regulation is to limit the development of substandard legal lots while at the same time not depriving property owners of reasonable use of their property. Uh, the proposed text amendment that I've drafted and is in your staff report um, limits the development to just one single family house with associated accessory structures, but it doesn't allow for the full entitlement of a given zoning district. Uh, by that, I mean, if it is in the R4 zoning district, um, they could not try to exercise a right if they do put a duplex on the property, even the, being a duplex is a permitted use they would only be able to build a single family house. So they are able to have reasonable use of their property, but they don't get the full extent of the permitted uses of the zoning district. Um, so again, the uh, language is in your staff report. Um, I'll go ahead and read it for the record. It's a, it's a short paragraph um, just for the public's benefit. Um, a non-conforming lots of record, a structure may be constructed or reconstructed on a lawfully established non-conforming lot or parcel created for the purposes of development and recorded in the deed books or plat books prior to adoption of this zoning ordinance. Even if the lot or parcel does not comply with the current zoning and subdivision regulations. However, all structures constructed or placed upon such lot or parcel must comply with all other required zoning bulk regulations and yard requirements. 
setbacks, height, etc. Except for lot area and the dimension. So really, it, it's not conforming lot because it's either too narrow or and or it doesn't meet the minimum lot area for the zoning district. However, no use. As an example, a two-family residence that requires a greater lot size than the established minimum lot size for a particular zone is permissible on a non-conforming lot. And then the other part of the text amendment, for some reason, there was a, a um, exception to a front yard setback kind of buried in this non-conforming section. I'm recommending that you put the uh, exception to a front yard setback as a footnote to the setback table. So when one is looking and trying to find their front yard setback, they can see that it's 25 feet, but they'll see a footnote and then they'll see that there's another way of doing the calculation. So it, it's for ease of use. Um, saying that uh, I recommend that you forward this with a favorable recommendation to the board of mayor and alderman. Or mayor and board of aldermen. Mr. Grimes. Sorry, I disconnected for a second. Oh, I, th um, I thought I lost you there. It was not you. It, no, it was, yeah, I, <laughs> it, it went out there for a minute, but it came back strong. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I will entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Motion made from Mayor Nois and seconded by uh, Alderman Blackwell. And that is for the zoning text amendment 226 on the non-conforming lots of record. Is there any discussion that would like to be made? With that, I will call the question. All right, Mr. Comer. Yes. Mayor Nois? Yes. All right, Claire? Yes. Alderman Blackwell? Yes. Mr. Sandlin? Yes. And Ms. Smith. And Ms. Smith? Yes. Okay. All right, and I am a yes. So that is approved, seven and up. And one last item, and that is the RFP on the comprehensive plan. Um, Mary, do you want to speak on that? Yes, sir. Um, we got a very positive response. We received seven um, requests for proposals that the selection committee is considering. Um, we initially had an aggressive timeline um, and we were anticipating bringing um, the selection committee's recommendation to tonight's hearing at the planning commission. But because of the overwhelming response, which is wonderful, um, with seven um, RFPs to consider, I wanted um, we we wanted to give the committee enough time to thoroughly digest the RFPs and come to a, a conclusion and not be rushed. Uh, with really, it was like a week to review all of them and, and do a score. So, long story short, um, we're going to be meeting this week to discuss the um, the RFPs and go over the scoring, and then we anticipate probably calling in the top two um, candidates for an interview and then bringing a recommendation from the select committee to the planning commission at their March 15th meeting. And then ultimately it would go before the board of mayor and aldermen. Any That's questions? Nope, just excited. <laughs> Exciting times. All right, with that, I will uh, Close I it have or... a question on, on that, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, just a procedural question. Uh, will will uh, 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 what, what would be the format for the presentation to the commission of that uh, recommendation? Um, I staff just and I anticipated that myself would just present the recommendation to you. It wouldn't be a formal presentation by the consulting firm, unless there is something else that the, that would be the planning commission's pleasure. I think that would be okay, but I was just wanting to make sure that we would get enough information about it to make an informed decision rather than just a rubber stamp. 
Yes, sir. I will provide you um, with the full um, RFP as well as um, all the data that was collected by the um, selection committee. And Mary, let me ask a question. Yes, sir. Yeah. Who's on that selection committee? Um, the members of the <laughs> the members of the selection committee are myself, Winston Brooks, uh, community development director. Um, Jennifer Moody, the city manager, the mayor, um, Scott St. John, city engineer, Scott Young from the TUA, and uh, Mr. Grimes, your chair. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? All right, with that, I will announce our next meeting will be Monday, March 15th at 4.30. And with that, I will adjourn our meeting. Thank you all for everybody coming down this snowy day. Thank you night. very much. All right, be safe. Good night. Good night. Snowy day. Womp womp. <laughs> it hadn't snowed yet. I know. <laughs> the sled is for that. naught. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Good night.